another haul. It's kind of the continuation from the last video. Um, trying to clear out a big hoard that I gathered up in the last couple weeks. Um, it's all listed in my eBay store. You can find my eBay store if you go down in the description of this video and click the link tree link. It'll take you to a list of buttons and you click the top one. That's my eBay store. I'm listing all my new stuff there. So there's also a link to my Etsy shop. Um, and a lot of my previous inventory is there as well. Um, but all the new stuff you're seeing today and in the last couple videos is listed only in my eBay store. So go check it out. Um, you can also follow so you'll be alerted when I list new things. Don't forget to also subscribe to my channel. Um, so I think it's in that corner. I always get it mixed up. I say that in every video. One of these days I'll, I should just put like a little cheat sheet up on my camera so I know which way to point um, but if you hit the little there's a little red square if you're in full screen mode click on that you can subscribe and then a little um, bell will pop up if you click on the bell then you'll actually get a message when my next video posts so do that um, please also if you like this video tell me by liking it um, share it with friends who you think are also into um, the vintage and thrifting scene and um, share it and like it and if you have questions or you have um, information to share, please comment down below. I'm especially open to you letting me know the things that I don't already know. So um, I actually have a little uh, research project that I'm going to ask for y'all's help with. Hopefully you guys can give me some information or at least lead me in a direction with some cool keywords, good keywords where I can find my own information because I have some stuff that has me stumped. So let's get started. We are going to start with, okay, so also in this video I've got like all the holidays. So I've got vintage Christmas, I have vintage Easter, and I have vintage Halloween. All in the same video and it's January. So if people are telling you that you should hold on to things um, until the holiday comes around, forget it. Like if you want to get rid of it, you can still make money off of Christmas, Halloween, vintage, any holiday vintage sells all year long. So I sell Christmas in the summer, I sell Christmas right now, I sell Easter. Easter is like everything Easter I get is just flying out the door. So I'm selling Easter stuff already, of course Valentine's Day, but that vintage stuff, the vintage holiday sells anytime. So don't like be hoarding that stuff and taking up space in your house. Go ahead and list it. You're still gonna make a couple bucks on it. So um, I've got all the holidays. So we'll start with, let's do Christmas first. So um, I have, let me gather all the Christmas stuff near to me so I can reach it without breaking anything. Um, so I love this. I scored this for $1. I couldn't believe it. Um, I got this at an antique store at an after Christmas sale. It is a fabulous white felt stocking with pixie elves on it. So. I love this, it's got great color, it is pristine. There's not a drip of dust on it. Um, so it's sparkly white, it's really well done. This is probably was probably one of those kits that you do at home, make your own. Um, really nice, it's got some glitter, no sequins, nothing too fancy, but it's got a hook to hang it with. Um, and it is just super cool. So this is probably 1950s, 1960s. Um, do it yourself. It's also extra long, so it's a big stocking. I think if I remember when I measured it, it was like 15 inches or something like that. So I scored this for a dollar. Um, I probably listed it somewhere between 15 to 22. That is already listed in my eBay store. Love it. It is so clean. I love when I find them and there's no name on it, so that's nice. Um, you can personalize it or you can just leave it plain, but I just love when they're like in good condition and still clean. No stinkies. So really nice find for $1, $1. All right, so found that Christmas um, already on my eBay store. And then I found this guy. So this is a Santa, it's glass, and it is Santa in his sleigh. And it's really like electric blue like that. That's the real color. So there's a little bit of light glare on it, but it's legit electric blue. It's an electric blue glass, it looks like, um, I mean, it looks like slag glass. I think it's slag glass. So there's clear spots you can see, and then there's spots that are milkier and more opaque. Um, and there are variations of shades of blue in it. So it's that marbly looking slag glass. Um, it's Santa in his sleigh, uh, getting ready to deliver some toys or some candy, because it's a candy dish. So this piece is, I think, usually it's Westmoreland, and I think Westmoreland created it, designed it, made the mold. And then I think somebody bought that mold or used that mold from Westmoreland and duplicated it. This one does not have a Westmoreland mark. There's no W, 
But if I look at the Westmoreland ones and I look at this one, they are the exact same design. So I'm guessing that some company, and I don't know which one, I didn't get that far in my research. I couldn't really find, I couldn't find it. So um, I don't know if this is Westmoreland or if it's just the Westmoreland mold or if it's neither and it's just a reproduction and a knockoff, I'm not sure, but it's super cool. And I love the color of this one. So you can see there's some detail of his face there. You can see his belt, the detail in his belt, and then some detail on the sled and that cool blue, variant, varied blue agate. Not agate, slag glass, yeah, agate glass. Um, there is one little chip. I'm trying to find it again. Uh, I think it's in the sleigh here. I'm trying to see if I can feel it. There's one little chip. Um, but it's not where you can really see it or notice it. I can't even feel it right now, but it's in the edge. But there's that cool little Christmas candy dish. Um, I picked him up after Christmas sale at an antique store, $3. And I think that I listed him, I don't remember. I'm gonna say 15 to 22, somewhere in there. Maybe a little bit less because of the chip and because it doesn't have a Westmoreland mark. Um, yeah, but I only paid three for him because I got him on sale. Um, next up, we have this cool little vintage ceramic Santa planter. So it's Santa waving. Now based on, this is um, a well-known company. I just can't remember which one, but just by looking at the stamp on the bottom, um, it does have a Made in Japan sticker, but looking at that stamp on the bottom, I'm gonna say Napco, looks like a Napco mark. Um, but this is Santa Claus waving. Merry Christmas. Um, this looks black, but it's actually a dark green. Um, but he has a really nice paint. He's in really good condition. No chips, no cracks. Little planter. You can put, this is big enough, you could actually put little candies in. Um, candies, you can put a little cactus in there, different kind of little plants, some silk flowers. Some of your plastic, if you have cool vintage plastic foliage, stick that in there. Um, so he's really cute and in really good condition. I picked him up at an after Christmas sale. I don't remember where. Um, didn't pay much for him and I don't remember what I listed him at, but he's already in my shop because again, I list all the holidays all year long. Moving on to, let's take a break from holiday and just do some year round fun stuff. So if you know somebody who loves horses, um, this is amazing. So I found this at a thrift store. It was on a shelf in a thrift store, I think here in Philadelphia, Goodwill. Um, he does not have any markings. I think he actually had a felt bottom that has since come off, um, but he's ceramic. He's in excellent condition, no breaks. Look at that horse. Oh, he is so cool. So it's a horse coming out of this ceramic, white ceramic base. There is a lot of crazing because he's older, probably 1950s, I think, probably made in Japan, but not a single chip, not a crack. Those ears are immaculate, no damage at all. Um, yeah, I don't, and and if I got him where I think I got him, it is the messiest, most disorganized Goodwill in the city of Philadelphia and probably that I've ever been in. Um, they have these terrible wire racks with no flat surface, so everything constantly falls over and falls through all these little grid marks, you know the ones I mean, the wire, wire base, it's awful. Um, I don't know how I survived that place because I always find for some reason in that area, there's a lot of vintage ceramics. So a lot of planters, a lot of figurines, a lot of left in, a lot of Napco, and it's always broken because of those stupid shelves. So I've given them feedback kindly, nicely, politely a couple times, but I'm ready to start getting serious because stuff's getting broken for no reason. Um, but he survived it. He's a tough guy, so he made it. Um, I think I listed him 18 to $22, somewhere in there. I uh, couldn't really find comps, not exactly like him. Um, but probably picked him up for like two bucks, maybe three. So there's that guy. Um, he's also marked Made in Japan in the back, in the glaze. Back to holidays, let's do Halloween. Um, I have, I'm not gonna take it out because it's a little dusty um, and it's gonna make me start sneezing. So this is a Fred Flintstone, a vintage Fred Flintstone Halloween costume. I think it might be Ben Cooper. The, task, the, the mask is intact, so it's one of those really light, I can take the mask out. It also comes with the shirt and the tie. So it's got the, let me just take all of it out. We've got the mask, the delicate, those 
what is that? Celluloid? I don't even know if it's celluloid. Delicate little mask, marked Fred Flintstone on the inside, and then Hanna-Barbera, but the Hanna-Barbera is cut off. Originally 29 cents. Um, it still has the elastic. It's still kind of stretchy, so it's not all dry rotted out yet. So there's Fred. Um, and then here's his tie. And then here is his shirt with the spots, his caveman shirt. So it's the whole set. Um, Size-wise, I would say that it would fit like a big kid or a really tiny adult. It's probably a larger kid's size, um, probably not meant for adults. Um, super cool, super vintage. I think it's 1960s. And so there's that. Um, I did find some similar online. I didn't pay much for it, maybe three or four dollars. I got this at my friend Crystal's thrift store um, in a box lot of things that I bought from her. Um, online comps weren't really outrageous, so I didn't put a really outrageous price on it. So probably somewhere in the teens on that one. And then we will move on. We'll take another break from holiday. So we'll go back and forth. So the next guy, you saw him in the, um, there he is. You saw him in the profile, uh, the thumbnail is this awesome. So I've seen dog planters and I've seen dachshund planters, but I've never seen a dachshund planter this stinking big. Look how big this guy is. So I don't remember measuring him, but he's well over a foot. He's sturdy and heavy and thick and durable. Um, no chips, no cracks. He's gray and white. He's got an awesome little face. Um, the lines of him, he's kind of a little bit geometric. The lines of him say like mid-century modern, 1950s for sure. Um, he's not marked. It looks like he did have a label at one time. Um, but I don't know if he's American or if he is, there's a little chip on his toe maybe. I can't tell if it's that or just glaze. Um, what was I saying? I don't know where he's been made. Um, but he is very cool. Um, he is very, very cool. The planter space is pretty large. Um, you could put a pretty big plant in there. Um, I would say that it's at least six inches and then probably two and a half, three inches wide. Um, but he is a doozy. He's a big boy. And that's why I bought him because he was so large. And I think I paid, I mean, I think I paid for him. I think I paid like nine to $12 just because I had not seen one this big. Um, I got it at an antique store after Christmas sale and it looked like they had bought a whole collection, somebody's whole collection of dogs and was reselling it and this was in there. So I could not pass him up because he was gigantic and just big and sturdy. So here is a dachshund planner. If he looks like your dachshund, you can go find him in my, in my eBay store. Um, very cool guy. So there's that fellow. And then let's move on to Easter. I've got Easter in here too. So I have, well, it's Easter-ish. It could be used as Easter. I'm, I'm calling it vintage Easter because they're things I think people would decorate with. So first up is this little, it's a canvas. Is canvas the word I wanna use? Yeah. He is a canvas stuffed plush rabbit. Um, probably originally sold as a baby toy. I love the red and white stripe of him. I love that he's not like a traditional bunny color or just like a plain. I love the red and white stripes. He's got a great painted on little face. Um, he's just got some yellowing. There's some little spots of soil. There's a little hole in the back of his ear here. Maybe the moths got him on the back of his ear, but otherwise in pretty good shape. Like there's no, there's nothing I feel like I need to sew up. You can see there's some staining in his white belly that was once white. It's now a little yellow, but there's some watermarks there. Um, but he's really cute for display. I would not give him to your toddler to play with, um, but I would put him up on a shelf in a baby's room as decoration, be a cute nursery decoration. I would put him out at Easter as part of an Easter de display and decoration. Um, so he's that cute. He's also red and white striped, which also goes with Christmas. So he could also be part of your Christmas display, but very cute, very vintage. His little ears um, are actually sewn together so that they stand up. I don't know what would happen if you cut them. I, I assume they would flop over, so I just left them that way. Um, but there he is, and he's got a little, what used to be blue ribbon, now it's a little like purplish gray. So there's him, I call him Vintage Easter, and then I'm calling this Vintage Easter too, but I can also see this being in a child's nursery. So this is a little planter. 
Um, I love how the bunny is suspended off the edge of him. And this I think I picked up at a Goodwill. But I love how he is suspended off of there. So you can see once he's on a flat surface, the bunny's actually hanging off the side. And I think that is really cool. Um, he's got one big tooth hanging out, which I really love. He's got a really cute expression on his face. His ears are in excellent condition. There are no chips. He has His ears have stood the test of time. He's got a blue bow on the back. I could see this in a little boy's room. I could see this in a little girl's room. I could see this in an at-home nursery. Um, the R could be for the kid's name or the R could be for rabbit. See how everything makes sense? Um, it's a planter. You can put a plant in it. You could put pens and pencils in it. Um, what I would say is though, it does have a tendency to be a little wonky and top heavy um, because the bunny's hanging off. So I would put something a little heavier in here. But very cute, it'd be very cute for Easter time. Um, cool vintage Easter, cool vintage nursery. Um, it could serve a lot of purposes. So there he is. He does have a little crack in one of his corners. Let me see if I can find it. There's a crack in, down here in this corner. Um, does not seem to be compromising the integrity of it. And on the bottom, it's marked Riddle 1952. So 1950s planter here, ceramic. All right, so there's the vintage Easter. Now, the thing I'm stumped on, um, I need your help. If there are any people who are out there, um, any of my friends, my vintage thrifting friends out there who are smart about metal figurines, I've got these girls. Um, I have two of these. So a work friend of mine, Kara, um, is cleaning out her... Um, I think it's her grandfather's house and had brought me some things that she might be interested in, that I might be interested in. Um, and I've been working through that box a little bit at a time. And these I've cleaned up and had them sitting around because they're like the one thing that she brought that I'm just like, hmm, I'm not sure about that. Um, they're really heavy for their size. So they are not magnetic, so they're not iron. I'm gonna guess because of the weight of them, because they're so heavy, I'm gonna guess that they're lead. Um, they are dogs with what appears to be like a Victorian girl riding the dog or sitting on the dog. The dog kind of looks like a Newfoundland. The fact that she's riding it tells me that it must be a bigger dog. So it probably is like a Newf Newfoundland. Um, she again looks to be like dressed in Victorian. She's kind of riding side saddle there. Um, there's the back, still has detail on the back. I cannot find any marks anywhere. She's got like the uh, Nellie Olsen curls in her hair. You see that? Mm-hmm, Nellie. Never forget that girl. Um, <laughs> and that's like one of my nicknames. So, but I'm nothing, I don't act like her at all. Um, and here's the other one. So there's two of them. So I shared it on one of my um, identification help pages and somebody thought maybe they might be bookends, which makes sense based on the weight, but the size, I mean, they're kind of small for bookends. Like bookends you just think are bigger, but I guess if they're meant to hold maybe kids' books, that works. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But if you can help me at all, that would be great. Like a maker, a time period, uh, anything. Like I know there used to be lead toys, but typically they were a lot smaller and like miniature in size. I don't know. I don't know. If you know, please share something in the comments. Help me. Um, because I would like to get them listed. I love that they're dogs. That's very cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. One definitely has a little more definition than the other. I don't know if it's just the way that it came out of a mold or something. I don't know. But there are my, I've been calling them dog with girl, girl with dog. I've tried lead dog, lead dog bookend. Girl riding dog, girl sitting on dog, dog, I've tried it, everything, everything, help me. So even if you're gonna help me think of some keywords, like Janelle, why didn't you search blank? Fill in the blank down in the comments and help a girl out. So I've got those, I'm still trying to figure them out. They're still a project. Um, and then, oh, finally, so this picture, last episode I had a picture covering up the hoard behind. This picture serving the same purpose, but I'm also gonna show you a close up. Um, if you love creepy clowns, I've got another clown for you. I had one in the last episode. I always pick up clowns. Clowns, cats, dogs, they always sell. This is um, 
one really creepy clown painting, or beautiful, it depends on your perspective. So there is Mr. Clown. He is um, with the kids there. You can see the circus tent in the back. That's probably my favorite part. You can see the big top tent. And then there's a little girl reaching up to him for a balloon. Um, and then there's some kids in the background with their balloons. And I'm really hoping that that um, clown's not gonna like John Wayne Gacy her. Uh, this is, um, the artist is H. Hargrove, and he did a few different clown paintings. Um, this one is a screen print, so this is uh, on canvas, and it looks like, it's on canvas, and it looks like paint on canvas. It doesn't look like a paper print, it's not paper. Um, it is a silk screen print. Um, very nicely done, beautiful color. It does have one little imperfection in the painting. You can see there's like a little gray line right there, um, but isn't super, it doesn't stand out super bad. Um, it's beautifully professionally framed. So this is a very cool frame. It um, was at that messy, unorganized Goodwill and got banged around a lot. So there are some imperfections and some damage. There's some damage to the frame you can see there. Um, but the frame is beautiful. It could either be painted or um, I think some dark furniture polish would cover up the scratches and it, you'd be able to put it right on the wall. Um, so there is that. Um, creepy, cool. Um, if you're into true crime, this could appeal to you. If you're into the circus memorabilia, this could appeal to you. If you're into creepy clowns, this could appeal to you. If you have somebody, a friend who's terrified of clowns and you're looking for a gag gift, this could appeal to you. That would be so dirty, but um, just an idea. It's in my eBay shop. I don't remember what I listed it at, probably like 20 something. Um, it's again, very nicely framed. It could be popped out of the frame if you wanted, um, if you wanted to repurpose the frame and hang the painting, the print separately. Um, but again, the color is super vibrant. I love the colors. I love the sunsetty sky. Looks like it's like four o'clock or five o'clock in the afternoon. Well, it's summertime, so I guess it would be seven, about seven in the afternoon, in the evening. Um, just a cool summer clown scene. So there's that H. Har Hargrove. Yeah, H. Hargrove. If you Google him, you'll see lots of his artwork in this style and a couple different clowns. Um, so that is available. So, Put it back there before I ruin it. All right, so that is it for this episode. Um, if you, again, if you can tell me anything about those little metal dogs, I would appreciate it. Um, if you have any additional information about anything else you've seen today, please share it below. If you just want to give a shout out and say hi, please do that as well. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share it with your junkin, vintage, lovin', thriftin' friends. And um, make sure that you subscribe so you can catch my next episode. And until then, be easy and be breezy. Have a good one.